Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because there are people out there who aren't you. A lot of them. And you don't drive like, whoa. I don't want my child being raised by a robot. Other drivers are not you. Yes, thank you so much to all 50 of my subscribers. Nope, definitely not you. Save with DriveWise and get a rate based on you. You're in good hands with Allstate. Some really bad guys are trying to kill me. I'm just a stunt guy. You thought maybe you could help me. We need to keep it Profesh. Profesh is my middle name. I thought your middle name was Danger. What's the stage name? Let's make some trouble. Get out of my head. Do you want to make out? Or... Nope. Good, because I don't either. It's not Profesh. Ready PG-13. The Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2024 to the next generation in the sport. We welcome you to Chipotle Basketball Nationals, presented by the Army National Guard. And here just west of Indianapolis, it's time to answer the question, who is the best high school basketball team in the country? Montford Academy from Florida, undefeated and chasing its seventh national championship. Paul VI from the renowned WCAC in the D.C. metro area. Montvert trying to follow their girls title from moments ago with a boys title. They knocked off Columbus out of Miami yesterday in the semifinals. Paul the sixth knocked out last year's champion Link Academy. And we are so glad to have you with us here courtside along with ESPN's National Director of Recruiting Paul Biancardi. I'm Ted Emmerich. Lindsay Polaris is coming right up. I like that you dress up here on Championship Saturday. Got to look good for the best baby. Well we were we started with eight teams here. We are down to two, and it's a worthy championship game with players that we're going to be watching for years to come. I expect a high-scoring game today because we have undeniable talent, some of the best in the country, ready to compete for a championship, Ted. 11 ranked players, the two best teams. What a way to finish the season. And two of those ranked players will be college teammates in just a few months. Darren Harris and Cooper Flagg, members of the number one recruiting class, on their way to Duke. Harris has had a huge tournament. Flagg erupted yesterday in the semifinals against Columbus. You go back to Thursday, Harris dropped 36 on IMG. And Darren Harris is one of the best offensive players in the country. This kid owns next level shot mechanics and shot preparation. He loves and he lives for the big game and the big moment. Nothing bigger than today in his career. He's got to carry Paul the sixth offensively. And on the other side, the number one player in the nation, Cooper Flagg. He went out for dog yesterday. Big time with 28 points. They need that mentality in this championship game. He went three for four from three. When that happens, the opponent doesn't have a chance. Check out this make. Well, just a few moments ago, Darren Harris spoke with Lindsey. Darren, we saw your team win in multiple ways over the course of this tournament. A high-powered offense against IMG, some stout defense against Link. How do you feel about how your team is headed into this title game? I mean, we're we, we got to keep the momentum we go. Uh, you know, we had a great offense rhythm against IMG. You know, yesterday was more of like kind of a grinded out game. You know, today I don't know what to expect. You know, they're a great team, really well coached. But, um, you know, I don't know what to expect. We're going out there and play hard. Your team was one of three teams during the regular season to hold Montverde to just single digits in that margin of victory. What's it going to take to get over the hump in this game? I mean, everything. You know, it's our last game. Uh, you know, us five seniors, we took this year really serious. It's our last dance, so, uh, you know, hopefully we uh, go out with the band. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. It was three days before Christmas, the City of Palm semifinals on ESPNU. Paul, you called that game 69-62 Montverde. The Eagles have beaten teams by an average of 35 points per game entering this tournament. And PVI was one of three teams to come to within single digits. Check out the starting lineup for Montverde. And you have four of the very best, five of the best seniors in the country. Wright, Queen, McNeely, Flag, and Newell all ranking in the top 25 of the ESPN 100 as Newell misses the three to start. 
And a foul called against Montverde. As for PVI, Ben Hammond headed to Rhode Island. Harris to Duke. Smith, a top 10 sophomore in the country. Abraham signed with UConn and Sundra to Notre Dame. And for Paul VI to pull off this upset in the championship game, big key is they have to limit their turnovers because Montverde will cash in on your mistakes. And they have to stay even on the glass if they can. And that's how you beat Montverde. That, that's the beginning of the recipe. For Montverde, they got to make threes, play through Cooper flag, and come up with that tenacious defense that they've played all year long to be undefeated. Harris driving against his future college teammate, and Isaiah Abraham splashes in the three. Once again, a good start for Abraham, just like yesterday in the semis. And he's got a big challenge this afternoon, number four in black, covering number 32, Cooper Flagg. He made some great shots yesterday. Abraham shut down Trey Johnson yesterday. Liam McNeely is fouled underneath. Watch Darren Harris put it on the deck. He draws two. Abraham ready. Money from the corner. Those two guys play off each other so well. Penetration and kick. They'll isolate. They'll post up. They know. They understand what each other does very well. So McNeely at the line, the top undecided player in the nation. Number 11 in the ESPN 100, was committed to Indiana, decommitted about a month ago. I love the way he moves without the basketball. In my mind, the best long-range shooter in the class. He's strong, he's physical, and he had four threes when these two teams played back at the City of Palms. Including three in the fourth quarter to help put the game away. Now he's got the assignment on Harris. And Harris in and out from NBA range. The matchups in this game, Ted, are amazing. Flag and Abraham, Ben Hammond, Rob Wright, stars everywhere. Right into the lane, the drop off to Newell. He lost it. And Smith is fouled in the open court by Liam McNeely. Now, PVI has won two very different games this week. Put up 101 points against IMG in the quarterfinals. Then they were able to lock down on Link Academy yesterday in the semis. A 58-44 win. 35-2 on the season. The only two losses to Montverde. And the team Montverde beat yesterday in the semifinals, Columbus. Sundra tees it up. Well, Sundra's going to stay behind the arc because he has Derek Queen on him. But he's got to fight inside for low post position. He's doing a good job fronting Queen right now. Queen almost stepped out. And an offensive foul is called as Sundra hit the floor. Yeah, Derek Queen was trying to tight rope the baseline. Watch this. Watch his left arm. Oh, he pushes off. Sundra with some good acting as well. Perhaps a little more blatant than the foul called on Aaliyah Edwards last night, the women's final four. That was a moving screen for everyone that's listening and watching right now. <laughs> Sudra misses again from the outside. Newell clears it. She moved. Her feet were wider than her, her shoulders, which can't be. Queen the lob. Newell headed to Georgia with an and one. Beautiful execution by Montford. They go up top to Derek Queen. Asa Newell screens, he rolls. That's how you beat teams that hard hedge. So what Monford does is they scout. They understand there's gonna be a hard hedge. Newell screens, he rolls, and he's going to Georgia to play for Mike White. Yeah, Newell, the Athens native, staying home. He's just the second five-star recruit to sign with Georgia in the ESPN 100 era that goes back to 2007. The other, Anthony Edwards. Top five. Now, Paul, you look at this Montford starting five. It, it's a new one for them this week. They have put out three different starting lineups in the three games here at Chipotle Nationals. And this lineup is ultra big, length at just about every position. After Rob Wright, it's Liam McNeely, 6'7, Cooper Flagg, 6'9, Asa Noel, 6'10, and Derek Queen pushing 6'10. Patrick Gonga checks in for Paul the sixth. Missed just about all the season with a foot injury. Cooper Flag comes up with the steal. And Flag hits the pull up. 
Yesterday, he came out with a scoring mentality and set the tone for Montverde. Hammond way short, and Flag is running again. He's got to have that same mindset in this game. Wide open, Flag buries the three. Now, his versatility is endless, but when he makes threes, the opposition has no chance because of what he does inside the arc. Had three of them yesterday. It's a 9-0 run for Montverde. Part of the big lineup for Montverde is their best defensively with this lineup. Gone for the big man. He answers with a triple. He'll be Flag's teammate and Duke next year, along with Darren Harris. Gongba can absolutely step out and shoot it. He did it for team takeover in the summertime. Confident young man behind the arc, and he is a load inside. Him and Derek Queen is a great matchup. McNeely is a marksman. Wing it up. The best shooter in the class of 2024. Said in the open, Ted, this was going to be a high-scoring game. The talent on the court is undeniable. Harris wants a three. Give it to him. Back and forth we go. These are deep threes. In the moment threes. Zone right now by Paul the Sixth. Marver likes to screen it on top. And right hits the floater. The future nice Baylor Bear. Nice screen by Derek Queen. Nobody came over for Paul the Sixth to help. Boy, you wonder sometimes, third game in three days at the end of this tournament, year after year. What are the legs like? So far, so good for both teams. Oh, they're playing on adrenaline right now. There is no tomorrow. Harris over Flag, right down the chute, over Cooper Flag. When Darren Harris gets in a rhythm, there's very few in America that can slow him down. My goodness. Oh, Flag thought about it from there. And Wright is called for the foul here. Downing with Ben Hammond. Darren Harris had 36 on opening night. He's determined to get 36 this afternoon. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because you know the right way to Stop! save with DriveWise and get a rate based on you. You're in good hands with Allstate. Designs our life. Who designs for water? Danny, this all happens every morning. Fresh sliced lettuce, tomatoes, and freshly grilled bacon. And I take the job of bacon manager very seriously. Is that a real job? Definitely. Freshly prepped every morning. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Chipotle Basketball Nationals, presented by the Army National Guard, is brought to you by Chipotle. Real ingredients, real flavor. Chipotle for real. And the Army National Guard, the next greatest generation is now. Well, earlier today here at Brownsburg High School, the Montverde girls won their third Chipotle National Championship in a row, led by Jelani Cambridge, the top point guard in the country, heading to Ohio State. Here in the boys' championship, Montverde, and Paul the Sixth are singeing the nets. We've had seven straight makes combined, and five of them have been threes between the two teams. We're six for ten combined right now behind the arc, and the defense is there on the shot. It shows you the shot-making ability and the talent in this game. Rising to the occasion on the big stage. Gongba trying to feed the cutting Womack, and he stepped out of bounds. And Gongba making his return from foot surgery back in November. He's basically been an assistant coach all season, Glenn Farello tells us, and back on the floor for this tournament. 
And Paul the Six needs him against Montverde's size. McNeely, finally a miss. Montverde loves to run that screen the screener action for Liam McNeely. Whistle inside. And McNeely picks up his second. And Gongba, part of that number one recruiting class, along with his teammate here at PVI, Darren Harris, and of course, on the other side, Vermont, for the number one player in the country, Cooper Flagg. Gongba is going to bring Duke a low post presence, a guy who can step out and shoot it, an excellent rebound, a good shot blocker. They need that presence in the ACC. Team slap hands with Isaiah Abraham, his teammate, and cousin. Glenn Farello loves that Gongba is back on the floor. He said for practice over the last month as they have prepared for Chipotle Nationals, there have been stints where Gongba has been the best player on the floor. His mom, Taj, was a great player at GW. Flag. Rattles it home. Again, Cooper Flag aggressive to start here in the championship. They set wide pin downs and baseline screens for Flag. They want him to curl into the lane and rise up and fire. That's where he's best. And Abraham throws it away. A turnover. Lindsay. I spoke to Ganga, Bukangba after yesterday's win over Link. He said he was excited to get a shot at Montverde. That foot surgery kept him out of the first meeting of the season with his team. Um, and he thinks he can really affect change. It was, he wasn't part of the two games that PVI lost during the regular season. Let's see, no doubt he is a difference maker in the middle. Flag is fouled by Abraham. Well, you need somebody to offset Derek Queen. And he's the one. He's got the size, doesn't have the same amount of girth as Derek Queen. But he can battle him inside, he can keep him off the low post, and most importantly, he can keep him off the glass. And Paul Glenn Farello has ramped him up steadily the last two days, nine minutes in the quarterfinals, 17 minutes yesterday. The conditioning looks pretty good so far after the long layoff. His body looks great, and he did a really good job off the injury. He came back a little late, then too early. Queen over Gongba, and Gongba with the foul. Derek Queen does a super job of getting low post position. Two feet in the paint, he's got the best hands in the game and a soft touch. And he can score over size, length, shot blockers, anyone this young man. Excellent free throw shooter as well, 86% on the year for the big man, headed to Maryland. Well, tomorrow afternoon, 3 Eastern on ABC. The most captivating women's basketball season ever as an epic final. Caitlin Clark in Iowa, Camilla Cardoso in South Carolina. Pre-game special starts at 2 Eastern, and Sue and Diana are back with their own commentary on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Best team in the country against the best player in the country. Ball the sixth has turned it over. Last two possessions, and Hammond turns it over again. So three in a row for PVI. And a timeout for the Panthers. Credit the defense of Montford harassing Ben Hammond. They're using their size to try to get him to speed up a little bit more and put him in spots where he's really uncomfortable. And that's hard to do as under control as Ben Hammond usually is. Under control with great speed, high IQ, mental toughness. Well, looking at Montverde's row two today in the quarterfinals, Montverde was down 12 in the first quarter. A sluggish start against AZ Compass Prep. They rallied. <laughs> they won the third quarter by a score of 25 to 5. Then yesterday in the semifinal, Flag versus Cameron Boozer. It's been a big matchup over the last nine months. They have met repeatedly. And Flag and Montford came out on top 84 to 70 as Flag dropped in 28. Thought the big reason they won that game against Columbus is the way Cooper Flag came out. He came out trying to score 30. It's that same mindset so far today. Gongba on the switch. Flag slipped. Got it to Newell. 
And Curtis Gibbons, money from the outside. Flag with the awareness to still give it up when he's on the ground. I mean, he has the mentality, the athletic ability, and the skill to take over any game on both ends of the floor. Harris misses over flag this time, but an offensive rebound for Jordan Smith. Shot clock turned off for Paul the sixth. Gongba against Queen. The fall away and the touch. How about the footwork by the big fella? Two massive post players going head to head right inside the paint. Final five seconds of the quarter. And Montford won't get a shot up. Well, led by Cooper Flag, seven points. Montford up by seven after one. Future Blue Devils starring in the Chipotle National Championship game. Phone call from the boss? Sorry. Outdoor time. It's me time. Ah, uh, I hear that. That's why we protect all your vehicles here, but hey. Nothing wrong with sticking it to the boss. Oh, Flo, you're going to take that? Why would that concern me? Because you're the, aren't you the? Huh. We never actually discussed hierarchy. OK, why don't we just stick to letting Dave know how much he can save when he bundles his home or auto with his boat or RV? Wait, I thought Jamie was the boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because I'm not boss material. Here at Chipotle Basketball Nationals, presented by the Army National Guard. It's the championship game. Ted Emmerich, Paul B. and Cardi, our entire crew. Simply a ridiculous play by the number one player in the country. Well, Flag's trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Loses his balance. He's down. He's out. He has two guys on him. Watch what he does. Behind the back to Newell. Newell, one more to Givens. And what looks like a turnover becomes three points for Montverde. Flag adding seven points to lead all scores in that first quarter. And you see what the rest of the number one recruiting class for Duke, at least two players for Paul the Six that Flag's future teammates have done so far. Harris and Gongba, big first quarters for PBI. This is one of the best number one classes that Duke has had in a while. And Harris opens the second quarter with the jumper. He's got eight. Montford has been the overlord of high school basketball for so long. Six Chipotle national titles in the last 10 years. And Curtis Givens has his second three. And Paul the Six turns it over. Abraham couldn't save it. Curtis Givens sets a baseline screen right there for Asa Noel. Then he pops open. You want to get open, set a screen. And then he knocks it down. Going to LSU. Queen, a freight train. He lays it home. Man, he can move at that size. Derek Queen brought the force on that one. Hammond the kick. Harris for three. It's an air ball. Flag might have gotten a piece of it. It'll stay at this end. Derek Queen knows exactly when he's open. Watch this. He catches, he turns, he locates. Nobody in my way. Right to the rack. Great mobility. We, we talk about the hands, but the footwork. He's so nimble. Gongba attacks the closeout for Queen, and he floats it in. How about the mobility of Pat Gongba? What are these young players eating today? Like, what do they do to get so mobile at that size? I think they're eating Chipotle, Paul. It's a good answer, Ted. <laughs> Caden Allen, who has not played beyond the final minute of the quarterfinals, missing the three badly for Montford. Allen, a sophomore from Georgia. Now trying to stay in front of Hammond. Hammond got past him and left it short. 
Given signed with LSU. Newell, the tip, doesn't drop. Smith. Gongba lines it up. And Patrick Gongba, that's part of his repertoire as well. Yeah, he's not afraid to shoot it. He has the green light to shoot it. Gibbons hits the floor. Foul called on Darren Harris. Tremendous action in this game. Gongba at the top of the key. Little shot fake. Looks like a floater at 6'9". Now, Paul the Six lists him at 250 pounds. That might be the biggest floater I've ever seen. You know, the rest might have done him well with the injury. He is fresh. Queen couldn't handle it. Smith ahead to Abraham. Oh, he got blocked by the rim. And out of bounds to Montford. Doesn't happen to Isaiah Abraham very often. Gorgeous pass by Smith. Abraham just misjudges his dunk. Tried to dunk it before he even got over the rim. Newell in and out. BVI always looking to run. They've got numbers. Smith lost it going up. And it's out of bounds to Montverde. Yes, yeah, a missed opportunity. Smith has to give that up at the last second for the layup. You gotta love the way the teams are sharing the basketball. Most of these buckets are coming from an assist. They break the pressure. Gibbons offline. Flag flying in. And flag re-enters your picture. Abraham, the pull up. Tough. That's good. And Cooper flag took a a little bit longer to get back on defense, and I think that affected his positioning in that last possession. You've got to really be next play in this game. I see UConn in the final four tonight against Alabama. Abraham will don that Huskies uniform next year. Under 10 to shoot. Haven't said that often today. McNeely off balance. He throws it in off glass. Montverde runs a little zoom action from McNeely. He turns the corner, lays it in. Hammond couldn't get around Queen there. Under 10 to shoot for PVI, and Womack is stripped. How about Queen at his size on the break? Too strong, but a foul. It's a down screen to a handoff. Liam McNeely turns the corner. No help because Cooper Flagg is on the right side of the floor. McNeely, a very good straight line driver, really strong. Takes contact well, and we know he can knock it down deep from the outside. This team is just loaded with offensive answers. So I believe instead of a foul, they called basket interference there on Paul the six, defending Queen there. Ball didn't go in, but tugging at the net there. Hitting it as it's in the cylinder, so Montford has its largest lead here at 10. Sundra to Smith through the back door, and a foul is called here. And we've got a timeout in the championship game at Chipotle Nationals. Montford up double digits, looking for their seventh national title. See, HomeQuote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we've spent a lot on this kitchen. Oh, yeah, really high-end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghost. Yeah, OK. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Zaxby's is already famous for chicken. Now we're going to be famous for shrimp by frying it to perfection and pairing it with a blend of cocktail sauce and Zax sauce that we call Zax tail sauce. A one-of-a-kind sauce for a one-of-a-kind shrimp. Woo, saucy! Zaxby's. Gator Light. 
rapid rehydration with a specialized blend of five electrolytes and lower sugar. Hydration for every athlete, forever. Next up on the F1 schedule is the Japanese Grand Prix at the famed Suzuka Circuit. Tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific on ESPN and the app. Pre-race coverage beginning midnight Eastern on ESPN2. Love to see F1 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That would be fun, right? We are at Chipotle Nationals, just to the west of downtown Indianapolis. Brownsburg High School, Ted Emmerich, Paul Biancardi, our entire crew. Montverde, number one in the country in high school basketball, 32 and 0 on the season. But their largest lead now, they're up 10. Liam McNeely, though, on the bench now with three personal fouls. You see Cooper Flagg, number one player in the nation, headed to Duke. Leads the Eagles with seven points. Montverde shooting 61% overall. Their execution has been high level. They already have 10 points in the paint. 44% from three, 80% from the line. PBI's got to dig in a little bit more on the defensive end, become a little more physical, put more pressure on the ball, and contest shots better. Smith, the highly ranked sophomore, cuts it to eight. It's a Montford team with a lot of continuity from last year. Paul, seven returners. They usually have to build a team on the fly year after year. Flag returned along with six others. From Flag is headed to the line. He just throws himself into the defense. Watch him. He's going to go. He's thinking about dunking it right now. Watch him. Cocking it back. Takes the hit. You know, he's unafraid when he goes to the basket, which is good and bad. He's got to understand when to jump stop and kick it out and when to try to finish. But with that mentality, he's going to be at the free throw line a lot in his future. I named the Gatorade National Player of the Year. It's also the Naismith National Player of the Year here at the high school level. Could very well be, Paul, the number one pick in the 2025 NBA draft. And that's what a lot of the NBA scouts are saying. And that Gatorade Award is very prestigious. It's a combination of character, academics, talent, and community service. The fouls on Isaiah Abraham. Big spot here for Paul the Sixth. Under four to play in the half. Abraham has to sit with three personals. And he has had the assignment on flag for most of the half. Sundra, stretch big. Doing his part. It's a three. Paul the sixth has two outstanding shooters on the four floor. 24 in the black, Darren Harris. And 12 in the black, Garrett Sundra going to Notre Dame. Got to find them early. Right off the screen. Lost the handle. Gone by the steal. Ahead to Jordan Smith for the deuce. Great move by Jordan Smith. Because if he tried to lay it up on the left, Cooper Flagg was going to get a piece of it. So Paul the sixth. Down 10 coming out of the timeout. Now trails by five. Flag against Gongba. And Gibbons rattles in his third three of the half. The unsung hero this season for Montverde. And right now he's the X factor in this game and he is trying to defend Darren Harris. He is chasing him everywhere on the court. Hammond banks it in. Montford certainly wanted a foul with Givens hitting the floor. No whistle there. Back into the hands of Givens. Flag. And Queen with the putback slam. Montverde can just crush you on the offensive glass. Hammond, nowhere to go. Rob Wright, the team's best on-ball defender. He'll play for Scott Drew at Baylor next year. Hammond gives it up. Smith the wraparound, and Gongba lays it home. That was great defense, and then eventually Paul the sixth. So quick and athletic in the backcourt off the bounce. So Gongba with nine. Third game in three days coming off the injury. Defending Queen now. Givens getting downhill and he floats it in. 
They love to run that middle screen. Sundra, too strong. And controlled for a moment by Wright, and a foul called against Paul the Six. I love that they put Derek Queen in handoffs. They're hard to hedge, they're hard to switch. Curtis Givens right to the rack, gets it up nice and high off the glass. And they run it right in the middle of the floor where there's no help defense. Preseason last year, Kevin Boyle told Curtis Givens when he joined Montverde, hey, you might be our 11th guy. Middle of last year, Givens earned his way into the starting lineup, and now he has become that X factor for Montverde. And they're running the same play for him again. And Curtis Givens stays hot! His fourth three of the first half. He has been dialed in, focused all season long. Could start on any high school team in the country. Could average 20 points and a lot of assists. Hammond with flag lurking. Foul call, 22 seconds. And Givens is a very good defender. Another handoff for Givens this time. He sees the big on the switch, decides to keep him outside and knock it down. Good recognition and read by Givens. If he took that one to the rack, it might have got blocked. Well, Kevin Boyle wanted the explanation of who the foul was on there. It is against flag. Hammond at the line, missing the first. And I believe Boyle was given a warning as well. He was named Naismith National Coach of the Year for the fourth time in his career this season. And Hammond cuts it to 10. Final 20 seconds of the half. You got 10 high major prospects on the court right now. This is why Chipotle Nationals is the best. Queen against Gongba. Now flag. Rising up on target. A three at the end of the half for the number one player in the country. That shot does not count at the buzzer, even though it was banked in. Flag with a dozen, and Montford with its largest lead at 13. Cooper Flag, jab step, crossover, deep. And when he gets cooking from the outside, his confidence goes to a different level. Let's take another look here at Hammond. Hard to tell with that replay, but the officials ruled it was not out of his hand in time. For Cooper Flag, that's his fifth three in the last two games. Most of his points have come inside the arc throughout this season. He's playing at a different level. So as Montford eyes its seventh Chipotle National Championship, they're up 13. Lindsay is with Paul the Sixth head coach Glenn Farello. Coach, some uncharacteristic turnovers and foul trouble for Isaiah Abraham has you down early. What do you need to do to increase offensive production? Yeah, I think the whole team, we haven't done a great job of contesting their threes. They've hit a lot of shots, uh, but we, we haven't made them uncomfortable at all. And on the offensive end, I think we've been too, uh, too much in a rush. Uh, we haven't been patient enough, getting paint touches, finding each other, having, having an offensive rhythm. So I think because of those mistakes, it's led, led them to have an opportunity to get down downhill on us. How do you get back into that up-tempo offensive rhythm that is so yeah. intrinsic to PVI? you got to get stops. you got to get stops. you got to be able to make, make plays in the, in the half court and then be able to push the ball and find each other. we got five guys playing together, and we're, they, they've limited us a little bit because of their pressure uh, and their physicality, and we got to answer with physicality. Thanks so much, Coach. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Lindsay, thank you. Yeah, Montford uh, shooting 67% in the first half. They're up 13 over Paul the Sixth. Coming up, we look back to earlier today, the number one player in the ESPN W100, Sarah Strong, announced her commitment. By the Army National Guard. About 15 miles west of downtown Indianapolis, Brownsburg High School, we are crowning a high school basketball national champion today. Montford, undefeated on the year, up by 13 over Paul the VI. Welcome back courtside. He's Paul Biancardi. I'm Ted Emmerich. Lindsey Polaris coming right up. The, the shot making.
in this game with all the high-level talent. We're going to see these players in college basketball next season. Some of them we will see in the NBA for years to come. But for Montverde, they just can't miss. No, they put on an offensive clinic in the first half. They shot 56% overall, 58% from three. They had eight assists on 16 field goals. That's outrageous. Uh, Curtis Givens was outrageous <laughs> for Montverde. Yeah, he was. I mean, this guy comes in averaging six points a game, number three. From Memphis, Tennessee, going to LSU. Over the night, he went one for six against AZ Compass Prep. But you know what he does? He doesn't get ready, he stays ready. And he has buried it behind the three-point line. And for Paul the Sixth, their main man, Darren Harris, trying to win a championship for PBI. Off the bounce, off the catch. He can shoot it any way you want. I love the handoff. Two dribbles, straight up, knocking it down. And we take a look at the first half stats brought to you by the Army National Guard against Harris and Flagg. Teammates at Duke in just a few months. Opponents here today. Harris with the two threes. Flag with a dozen, the number one player in the nation. Before we start the second half, Lindsay, you spoke with Montverde coach Kevin Boyle. When I spoke to Kevin Boyle, he said a couple of the keys to success about this matchup were to neutralize Ben Hammond from mid-range and give Darren Harris absolutely no free threes, both of which they've been able to do. Hammond just three points and Harris no uncontested shots. Yeah, Lindsey Harris and Hammond combining for 11 points in that first half. Remember, Hammond had a 20-point, 13-assist game in the quarterfinals. Yeah, Lindsey is exactly right. Don't let Hammond in the paint and try to make Harris's jump shots contested, take away his airspace. As Glenn Farello said, we got to make them more uncomfortable on the offensive end. How about this lineup for Paul the Six to start the second half? Gongbo played so well in the first 16 minutes is out there and Abraham with the three personals on the bench. Gongbo with the steal ahead to Jordan Smith against Flag and he's bottled up. It's a turnover. He walked. See the defensive awareness by Cooper Flag to chase down the breakaway and alter it at the rim. What he did caused the turnover. He didn't block it but he caused the turnover. And, and that's the power, the superpower of Cooper Flag. Queen to lob, Newell to the top floor. Another clinic on the offensive end against the press. Get to the spots, get it to Queen in the middle. He knows exactly where to go with it. Largest lead of the game for Montford at 15. Harris, offline. Smith fighting for it with Newell, and a foul. Watch Montverde, they get into the middle. Derrick Queen catches, turns. Asa Newell, a great lob catcher. He's got great bounce. His ability to get up quick. He's got a really fast and quick second jump as well. Newell ranked just behind Queen and McNeely, his teammates in the ESPN 100, absolutely had a case to be a McDonald's All-American, but the limit is three per school, as Sundra knocks down the three. And Newell says he was disappointed by that, but he channeled his aggression in the games that followed after the McDonald's rosters were announced. He handled it very well. And a lot of credit goes to him and his parents for how they responded. Kept the focus on the team and on his game. Givens got past Gongba. Nice ball movement. And Wright floats it in. Montford so connected offensively. Well, they had eight assists on 16 field goals in the first half. They share the ball as well as any team in the country. They don't care who gets the credit or who gets the shots. They just want to get the win. Gongba working against Queen. Cooper flag on the run. Attacking against Gongba. Left it short. Hammond races ahead. And blocked by Flag. He looks like Superman when he comes over from the weak side to try to block it. All he's missing is the cape. He is the best shot blocker in the high school game. He does so much to impact winning. Newell misses. Queen, an offensive rebound and a foul on Paul the Sixth. 
Hammond thought he had tied him up, but the foul's called on the point guard. Cooper Flagg is a great offensive player, but he changes the game defensively with his ability just to hustle, get back into the play, try to block a shot, force a turnover. Uh, he is relentless on the defensive glass and the ability to shot block. You have said so often, Paul, so much of his impact comes beyond scoring. How about the pass he made down on the ground in the first half behind the back just to get the hockey assist? Yes. Queen traveled, and it's a turnover. Look, Cooper Flag is different. He's one of the most humble number one prospects that I've ever seen or evaluated in my time of coaching and with ESPN. That's what makes him different. He told us during McDonald's All-American Week in Houston that he's always trying to stay in the moment, just be present where he is. Smith puts it in for Paul the sixth. And he's a great teammate and he only truly cares about the bottom line. He can have a bad game and his team can win and he'll be happy. Now he won't be satisfied, but he'll be happy for the win and his teammates. Foul called as Queen got it. It's against Jaquan Womack. Cooper with the crossover. Oh, but he's down on the ground. The awareness to get it to Noel. Noel one more to Givens. And that's determination, that's awareness, that's basketball IQ, that's giving it up for your teammates. He was a part of the Montford team that was upset in the quarterfinals as a one seed a year ago. Just seeded it in the lane after missing the tip in at the buzzer as Queen scores for Montford and so motivated to win a Chipotle National Championship this season. When I talked to Cooper Flagg about last season and the goals for this season, he still has a bad taste in his mouth from last year. And he does not forget what happened and how it happened. Smith, the offensive rebound, off the flyby. Harris connects. It's a three. Plenty of time for PVI. Some consecutive stops. Maybe a run out or two, so they don't have to go against a set defense. There it is. Ben Hammond forces the turnover by Robert Wright the third. PVI has the defensive ability. What they lack in this game is the physicality against Montford, the ability to play through bumps, beat them on the glass, stay in front of the ball. You absolutely love Ben Hammond. I do, because he's a winner, tough kid, trying to organize his team right now, and he's getting pressure from Robert Wright. Smith slipped against McNeely, and he turned it over. A timeout with Montford up by 11. Darren Harris, shot fake, shot. Just beautiful. I'm a bird stuck in Larry Bird's attic. And I'm going cuckoo. Hmm? You may be a legend on the court, but you're an amateur up here. So get all state, save money, and be protected from mayhem, like me. The future is threatened by enemies often unseen. They alert Marine. And unexpected. In the midst of an uncertain and evolving world, the need for Marines to defeat these shifting threats is critical because the need to ensure stability for our nation has never been greater. When there are battles to win for America's future, there is one constant, Marines. Every Jersey Mike sub is sliced and stacked right in front of you since 1956. You slice, I snack. I said slice and stack. Tomato, tomato. It's tomato. Freshly sliced since 1956. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Going to Connecticut, spotting up. Left corner, triple. Beautiful pass by Harris. Puts it on the deck, rises up. That one's over Cooper Flag. It's been tough in this tournament for PBI. They need more of him down the stretch. Abraham also a 4.0 student. He's our Chipotle player spotlight here today. And maybe the 
most loaded order of the week. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> ten items. <laughs> He's plus, got the plus the chips, queso, and a side tortilla there at the bottom. Get him a drink as well. He's got ten items in that order. And he finishes it with the guac. Hey, Danny Hurley is uh, saying it, well, he's got to fuel up for his freshman year. Givens got another one. The game of his life. Curtis Givens with his fifth three. You know, Kevin Boyle and staff have praised him all season long in practice and in games for what he gives this team. Doesn't have to be the star, but tonight he is. Hammond with the floater for Paul the sixth. So the lead is 12 here for Montford, nearing the three-minute mark of the third quarter. National Championship of High School Basketball hanging in the balance. Queen playing through contact, and he's fouled. The shooting percentages for Montford are incredible. 65% overall, 58% from three. If they were playing any other team in the country, they'd be up 20 to 30 points right now. Like they are against just about any other team in the country. Their average margin was big this year. As Queen hits the first Sunday night baseball matchup. They met in the ALCS a year ago, the Astros and the World Series champion Rangers. Love saying that as a DFW guy. 7 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. You do love your Dallas teams. Just like you love your Boston teams. Yeah, but we win. <laughs> uh, what did I just say? The Rangers won the World Series last year. Harris for three. No. Oh, oh Abraham. It Got doesn't it. look pretty, but it counts. It's that guac, man. He put that in the order. Pumped up his legs. He's got to be Chipotle's in stores. It's got to be a few. Now, Abraham is playing with three personals. And PBI comes up with the steal. Darren Harris headed to Duke. Got it back from Sundrine. Blocked by his future college teammate, Cooper Flag. Flag the kick. Givens, one more. Give it to him. Curtis Givens has gone nuclear. Somebody in the truck needs to get a hashtag Sports Center Top 10 for Cooper Flag. It's going off in this game. Just like Givens, who comes up with the steal. He's got 20 points. Three pointer number seven. In and out. How about from the corner? And Harris pulls it in for PVI. Abraham falling away. He hits. And a timeout for Glenn Ferrello and Paul the sixth. Check out Cooper Flag defensively. He is omnipresent. Outside the paint. Comes in to block it at the rim. The spin, the push. Creativity. Right, one more. Givens with the knockdown. And you mentioned it, the game of his life. Abraham on the other side with the pull-up jump shot. Paul the sixth is taking the best punch of Montverde. Now, Glenn Farello telling us this week, yeah, of course, he would be excited to see Montford again after losing just before Christmas at the City of Palms. With Farello, PVI has beaten three number one ranked teams in his tenure, including Montverde, going back to 2013. But these were the numbers from the first matchup this season at the City of Palms. Paul VI led early in the fourth quarter before Cooper Flag and company went on a 7-0 run. Queen with 20 to lead all scorers. But right now, Paul VI facing a double-digit deficit, 136 to go in the third. And Paul VI is battle-tested. Make no mistake about it. They have eight wins against ranked opponents this season. Newell kicks to Givens. Flag gets the screen. Newell has the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. 
It's hard to set up your defensive game plan against Montverde. You try to take away Cooper Flag. You try to take away Derek Queen. Liam McNeely from the outside. And then the X Factor, Curtis Givens, goes off in this game. There's really no way to defend Montverde when they are in sync. McNeely rims out. Now Montverde recruits nationally, loaded every single year, but the schedule they play is against teams just like them who recruit at that level. What makes this so interesting for Paul DeSex as Gogba turns it over is PBI is a team full of players from the DNV. And they are absolutely one of the best teams in the country as well. Finished top five in the country in the ESPN team rankings. They won the WCAC this year, the state championship as well. Montverde now beat 15 ranked opponents this season. And they beat them pretty well. Only three teams, I believe, under 10 points. PBI, one of them. Prolific prep, the other two games. McNeely in and out again. And Hammond the rebound. And they take everyone's best shot. Shot clock is dark for Ben Hammond and Paul the sixth. Backing down right at 5-11. Abraham blocked on the perimeter by Flag. He's got another one. And Flag's fly forever. The number one player in the nation closing out the third quarter with a bang. This has to be Sports Center top 10. The block, the push, the determination, and the flush. It's all Cooper Flag and Montford at Chipotle Nationals. I'm your overly competitive brother. I'm ready for a rematch. Oh. Here, take a free shot. Go ahead, knock yourself out. You're about to get served. Oh. <laughs> Seriously? We get all stayed, save money, and be protected from mayhem, like me. Spam. In a taco? Pork favor. Sizzle, pork, and mmm. The number 13, original Italian, sliced right in front of you, topped off with the juice. Just what the doctor ordered. Say what? No, really. Get this man a number 13 Italian, stat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The number 13, original Italian, only at Jersey Mike's. Chipotle Basketball Nationals, presented by the Army National Guard, is brought to you by Chipotle. Real ingredients, real flavor. Chipotle for real. And the Army National Guard, the next greatest generation, is now all the angles of Cooper Flagg, the number one ranked player in the class of 2024. The block and the jam to finish the third as Montford is up 14. We start the fourth. Ted Emmerich, Paul Biancardi, Lindsey Polaris, our entire crew. Flagg heading to Duke, 14 points, five rebounds, and four block shots. He's so focused and determined to get the win. He understands that he has to be the center of the offense. The team can play through him, they can play off of him, but he has to get his points when it comes to the big moment, the big game. And he set the tone in this one, and then Curtis Givens just played off his teammates and has buried six threes in this game. He's got 20 points. Jordan Smith opens the fourth with a miss. Wright crashes down on top of Gongba, and the foul's called. It'll be on the big man for Paul VI. Who's heading to Duke like flag. And Cooper didn't even offer to pick up Gongba. It's going to be his future teammate. He left him there. He, <laughs> now, he did the right thing. He helped his teammate up, but he's all business, Cooper Flag. Let somebody else take care of that. 
today. Right. right, for the next seven and a half minutes, he's the opponent. I like it. National championship in high school basketball at stake here at Brownsburg High School, west of Indianapolis. Montford undefeated on the year. Right, the Baylor signee stripped by Hammond. And it belongs to Paul VI. And watch Cooper flag, trying to help up Rob Wright. There's his future teammate, <laughs> Patrick Gongba, going to Duke, and he's saying, Coop, what about me? And Coop just walks away with his teammates. All business, Cooper flag. Great pass. Now Gongba with a flush. How about the velocity of that pass by Isaiah Abraham and the catch by the big fella? All right. Draws the foul. Head down. It's only a dozen points right now. Shot fake pass. Flush. This team still has plenty of fight. Paul the sixth. And they're part of the number one recruiting class that John Shire has signed. Again, Harris and Gongba of Paul the sixth. And Cooper Flag of Montverde, part it, of it. It has great athletic ability, size, obviously. Scoring ability, shot making. Oh, wow. Noel with the deflection, but a foul. And that's his second. You know, this is another great class by John Shire and his staff. The class that they have on campus now are guys that are probably leaving with McCain and company, Foster. A terrific group he brought in this year. Isaiah Evans, top 10 player in the class as well. We saw him in Houston in the McDonald's All-American game. Big time scorer. Yeah, he's going to be terrific in time. His body needs to change. He's got a Brandon Ingram body and game. Gordon Smith, no. Gonga trying to follow and a foul. I believe before Gonga put it in there. It's on right. And yeah, basket doesn't count there. Harris to the line. You make these two, you get two consecutive stops and scores. You get it to two possessions. Now it's a different ball game. Harris named the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Virginia. Also was the WCAC Player of the Year. That league, renowned, just dripping with history and tradition. The Washington Catholic Athletic Conference. Top 40 player in the nation. He just plays big in big games. The MVP of the Peach Jam. The team take over when they won it. And he loves the moment. He loves the pressure. Trapped by Paul the six. Now Queen. Ran into trouble. McNeely the turnaround. I don't think he expected to be open. Harris wants it. Off the mark. Could have cut it to single digits there. But I like the trapping by Paul the sixth. Right navigates it. And he flips it home. Guards win games. Rob Wright is going to play for Scott Drew at Baylor. How about that back quote with V.J. Edgecombe coming in next season? He doesn't panic, Rob Wright. He's got great vision, good speed, strength. Nobody comes over to challenge him at the rim. I think that is an opportunity for a hard foul. Don't give him the layup. You can make the argument that Wright has been the missing piece for Montford this season. Abraham wanted a foul on flag there. Instead, it's his fifth block. No question about it, Rob Wright. Most important player this season for Montford. They had all the other pieces. Queen, no. Oh, look how flag soars above everyone trying to follow. Derek Queen, your majesty, put back and won.
Monfort is climbing. And I mean climbing all over the offensive glass. Coop, Queen. You can't watch the ball on defense. You, you got to try to block out, put your body on their body. Maybe get an over the back call. Queen wearing the crown, staying home. <laughs> Baltimore native. Gotta love it if you're Kevin Willard. The Turks. They're gonna go to him to start the season. He, he is gonna have a fantastic freshman season. Long as his conditioning stays strong. And Jaquan Womack turns it over right in front of us. You see the emotion on Flag's face. Yeah, he senses it right now. He feels it. Montford, 5-10 away from a high school national championship. Montford looking to add to the trophy case a record six Chipotle national championships. Go back to 2013, the start of a three-peat with Ben Simmons. D'Angelo Russell was a part of two of those teams. Paul, you saw that squad throughout. Oh. We saw the R.J. Barrett-led team in New York in 2018. 2021 with Jalen Duran down at Fort Myers. And 2022 with Jalen hood Shafino and Tariq Whitehead and Dylan Mitchell. Last year losing in the quarterfinals as the one seed. In their last 49 games, 48 and one, undefeated this year, the only loss in the quarterfinals of this event a year ago. Such a special group that gets along so well off the court. Uh, they are really good friends away from the game. And it shows when they play. Oh, Flack lost his shoe here, and he turned it over. Look at Flack getting back on defense, and he comes <laughs> up with the steal. Oh, come on now. He doesn't need the sneaker. He's number one in the country. Unreal. He's going to get a lot more of those shoes when this game is over. <laughs> OK. Let's see, he just slips, <laughs> but he doesn't lose his composure. He picks up the basketball. There's a deflection. He gets back on defense somehow. It's like he's skating out there. He is from Maine, by the way. Oh. Tying those sneakers up tight. And McNeely with the hustle play there, digging it out, finding flag with one shoe <laughs> as Montverde takes it away. Absurd. What can't Cooper Flag do? That question has been asked quite a bit over the last three years. Queen inside, fouled by Gong, but of course, Flag reclassifying. He was a sophomore a year ago, moved up to the class of 2024, and heading to college next season. Well, Patrick Gongba will join Flag at Duke later this year, but Gongba has fouled out, so his run here at Chipotle Nationals coming to an end, making his return from foot surgery back in the fall. Yeah, he gave Paul the sixth everything he had. Week two UFL schedule continuing tonight. Eight Eastern on ABC, the Renegades and A.J. McCarron and the Battle Hawks. Sunday Stallions and Panthers kick off noon Eastern on ESPN. Roughnecks and Defenders, four o'clock on Fox. And the motion written on the face of Gongbo. You saw it on the bench. Playing so well this week, coming back from the injury. Harris scoops it in with a foul. You got to see this one more time if you haven't. Cooper Flag goes to help. Shot goes up to the basket. Two points for Harris. Womack returns for PBI. And now without the big man in the middle, down 13, under four and a half to play. What's Queen trying to show everybody? He's a point guard? A point center. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a great passer, but he's got to leave the ball handling duties to others. Good hustle. And Womack diving to the floor. Still Montford ball here, 11 to shoot. All right, back to Cooper Flag losing his shoe. Comes to get the ball. He slips. The shoe comes off. It doesn't explode like Zion's did back at Duke. Look at the hustle by McNeely. 
It goes back to flag, and he has the mindset to get rid of the basketball to his teammate. New sneakers in the locker room for Cooper Flag waiting. Three to shoot here. Uh, McNeely trying to find Flag, and oh. he banks it in at the shot clock buzzer. Cooper Flag cooking again. Abraham with a three. Late back down to a dozen here, 345. EVI needs turnovers, and quickly, that's not going to help. Queen at the rack. Great assist by Curtis Givens. This team is quick to give it up to each other. Ball doesn't stick. Sundra and air ball. And you don't see a lot of bad shots by Montford all season long. Nobody's watched them more than we have. Givens is fouled with 3.17 to go. How about flag at the end of the shot clock? Well, he knows how much time is left. Such a smart player. Just throws it up, tries to beat the shot clock. Right now, they are beating up on Paul the Sixth. And Isaiah Abraham just fouled out here. Again, his future team, Connecticut, in the Final Four tonight. And Abraham's high school career coming to a close. What a week he's put together. Fantastic week. Young man plays hard all the time. Brings that 6-7 versatility. No nonsense. Never question his effort or his heart. A lot of success at PBI over the years. Now, PBI has filled up their trophy case this season, winning the WCAC title, winning a Virginia Independent State title yet again. This is their second appearance here at Chipotle Nationals and making it to the final against Montford. Timeout for the Eagles. And the lead is 16. Paul, let's check out the all-tournament team for Chipotle Nationals this week here near Indianapolis. Gibbons, Flag, and Queen for Montverde. Darren Harris just lighting it up all week for Paul the Six. And Cameron Boozer in the two games for Columbus put up big numbers. Yeah, Boozer was great. Last night he had, I think it was 29 points in 32 minutes. Darren Harris got Paul the Six to this point. Cooper Flag and Derek Queen were good on opening night. They were great last night. And the MVP, in my mind, of this game could be Cooper Flag, could be Curtis Givens. Of course, Boozer, son of Carlos Boozer, 14-year NBA veteran, the number two junior in the nation. And Givens with six threes today, now trying to defend Harris, and Flag blocked his shot again. Duke on Duke. Flag the drop off. And Wright is fouled. What I love about Cooper Flagg and all the Montverde players, they, they don't stop playing with the lead. Look at him help. Can't strip it, but he blocks it. Very smart, aware, alert, off-ball defender. And sometimes he gambles, but he gets his blocks. He averages close to three steals per game this season. He's got great anticipation off the ball. And Flagg has all six of Montvert's blocks as a team today. To go with the six rebounds and 16 points. You know, a lot like their coach, they, they don't stop when they're up. Like, they don't take their foot off the gas. They don't want to win. They want to dominate. Sundra left open. And Queen the rebound. Under three to play here. Oh, Queen turned it over. Again, trying to look like a point center. That drives Kevin Boyle crazy. <laughs> Give it up to Rob Wright, somebody. One of the nicest, sweetest kids you'll ever meet off the basketball court, Derek Queen. He's the MVP of the McDonald's All-American game yeah, Tuesday night in Houston. He had his arm around Derek Har uh, Dylan Harper, yes. excuse me. Yes, they were both MVPs. Wall oh. Mack in and out. And numbers for Montford. Oh, Queen rejected by the rim. But a foul. Oh, 
Uh, Derek Queen couldn't quite get up in that instance. I'll tell you what, uh, Kevin Boyle told us earlier this year that last season, when he was benched around January, Boyle thought that Queen would transfer. It's like, you know what, Montford's not for me. It's too hard. But Boyle says that Queen went to work, and now as a senior, Paul, we have seen the motor to go with the rest of the skill set, the hands, the footwork, and the passing. Yeah, and Kevin Boyle said he came in with a motor at about five. He's worked to 7.5. He's at a nine right now. And let's give a lot of credit to Kevin Boyle Jr., who in the last month took Derek Queen for extra workouts at nighttime. Not basketball workouts, but conditioning workouts just to get him ready for Chipotle Nationals. Boyle Jr. says he took out an extra gym membership to do that. <laughs> uh, Queen throws it away here. Kevin Boyle Jr. and his wife Nicole just had a baby, their second child. And so Nicole tells Kevin Boyle Jr., are you kidding right now? You're going to spend two nights a week in the month leading up to Nationals away from the family just to work out with Derek Queen? And Boyle Jr. says, babe, I'm all yours after this week. I hope his dad will reimburse them for the membership. <laughs> Jordan Smith misses the three flag, the rebound. It's the least that dad could do. But when you have a month off leading to this event year after year, you want to make sure that you're in the best shape possible. Yeah, you have to do everything you can and put yourself in a position to win. You can't leave anything to chance. Junior Adlon Elamine with the pure stroke. And a timeout after the three for Paul the sixth. Now Kevin Boyle Jr. has a bright, bright future. Oh my gosh, does he ever. He could take over for his dad someday, be a college assistant or a head coach somewhere else. Bright. A hard working guy, great at scouting, does film work with the kids, runs the practice for dad sometimes, does it all. Well, another guy who does it all for Montverde, Cooper Flagg, number one player in the nation. He did it all, he does it all, and he's going to Duke next season. Get your season tickets right now if you're a Duke fan. Because when that three-point shot is humming from the outside, he is impossible to defend. So good inside the arc with his scoring, right on the glass, an exceptional shot blocker. How about that one? On the ball, and then finishes the play. His effort, determination, and focus is never questioned. Approaching the final minute here at Brownsburg High School. Montford up by 14. Foul by Hammond on Givens. 105 to go. I loved what the flag told us in Houston uh, before the McDonald's All-American game. He remembers the long car rides as a kid growing up in Newport, Maine. It's about 90 minutes there and back to Portland, Maine for practice. And so Mom Kelly, who played basketball at the University of Maine, won four conference titles there, went to the NCAA tournament, would always put on full games from the Boston Celtics 1986 championship season in the Chrysler van, at the TV in the back of the seat. Larry Bird, the finals MVP that year as the Celtics beat the Rockets. And Larry Bird quickly became Cooper Flagg's favorite player. You know, Cooper Flagg passes the ball like Larry Bird. Now, I'm not saying he is Larry Bird. I'm not comparing him sure. to Larry Bird. You can't. But he does have Larry Bird-type isms when it comes to passing the basketball. Now, who do you compare him to? I have no idea. He's got the versatility of a LeBron James. He's got the toughness of a Jimmy Butler. And a lot of people say Kevin Garnett-type. I can see that as well. But he's his own man, Kevin uh, Cooper Flagg. And Monford senses it now with 45 seconds as Flag exits with the rest of the starters. 16 in the quarterfinals, came out assertive in the semis against Columbus with 28, and the all-around game today that is typical for him. You don't see him smile very often, but you're going to see a lot of smiling and laughter and hugging by Cooper Flag. Starting right now. 
kid's a pure winner. I mean, last year's loss has been on his mind ever since the game ended. So driven to join the likes of Ben Simmons and R.J. Barrett and Kate Cunningham and Scotty Barnes, those that won at the highest level here at Montford. Derek Whitehead as well. And Flack's going to do it here today to finish out his high school career. Mont Montford goes undefeated this season. Do you know how much sacrifice that you have to make to go undefeated? Sacrifice your game, sacrifice your personal life, your time management. Everything has to be on the back burner to win it all. And they have done it with the leadership of Kevin Boyle, who knows how to win championships. It will be the seventh for Montford in 11 years as Ann Brown, the sophomore, hits from deep for Paul the sixth. So the final seconds come off the clock. It is number seven for Montford. And luck has nothing to do with it. The Montford Eagles are Chipotle High School National Champions for the seventh time in 11 years. In the opening game against AZ Compass Prep, they were down at the half, a little bit rusty. Off for 30 days, they came out smoking in the second half. They beat Columbus yesterday and really were in control of this game from start to finish. And the leader of this team, the heart and soul, Cooper Flagg led the way yesterday and this afternoon. He got a lot of help all season long. He got a lot of help tonight. But he is a different type of number one player. You'll see him in a Duke uniform later this year. But right now, you'll see him in the Chipotle High School National Championship shirt, if he can put it on. We send it over to Lindsay with Derek Queen. Derek, your team secured the program's seventh title with three players in double digits and an all-round defensive effort. How important was it to finish this as a family? It was it was important to finish this as a family because we've been through a lot. We sacrificed, uh, like we all go to like a boarding school, so we all sacrifice and, and we all do a lot of things with each other, and this meant a lot to us. You both were a part of that team that had a first-round exit last year. How did that prime your focus for this year's run? I mean, it was everything. Um, we thought about it every single day. Pictures on our wall in our locker room. I mean, we use it as fuel. I mean, having like five starters come back, that's a lot. And you know what I'm saying? We took that and we used it every single day, just get better every single day and just get this shit done. Cooper, your mom said that this was the most important accolade you wanted to get to cap off that senior season. Does the reality live up to what you thought it would be? Most definitely. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine anything better with my brothers. I mean, we all moved away from home, like Derek said. You know, just to build this type of family connection, it's, it's really special. Your head coach, Kevin Boyle, said this is the closest team he's coached in 35 years. What is the feeling? Can you put this into words? No, no not really. Not just, at all. He was just going to celebrate. We won. It's done now. It's all done. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Flags fly forever, and so do Cooper Flag and the Montverde Eagles. 79-63 over Paul the Sixth. The hardware heading back home to Central Florida. Well, you can hear Cooper Flagg's competitiveness in that interview with Lindsey. Great job, Lindsey. Cooper Flagg tests opponents and the dump button. He brings the edge <laughs> even to the interview. Stick it on the bracket. Montford wins the national title in high school basketball. For Paul Biancardi, Lindsey Polaris, and our entire crew, Ted Emmerich saying so long from Brownsburg. On to Cleveland, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship open practice. L. Duncan, take it away.